What's going on everyone? Steven here. It's been a while since I have posted a video, almost a year. <laughs> uh, so I've just kind of started getting back into Cheat Engine over the past couple of months or so off and on. So just finished working on a tiny little like project here. I mean there's still a lot of stuff I want to hack with this game but with the scenario that I came up with I figured I would share uh, in the event that it helps some of you. So basically there's a shared instruction that shares like, you know, coordinates. So whether it's the camera or items in the world or the non-playable character here. Um, so I've separated that out. It was pretty simple. But what I wanted to do was write custom values, custom XYZ values um, in place of the ones that the game writes for just the character here. So I'm going to show you kind of an approach I took with doing that. Um, so this isn't, you know, a beginner's tutorial, obviously. So if this is over your head, then go check out some of my previous videos. All right. So basically, I've got an AOB scan here based on an instruction that reads uh, the value. This specifically loads the coordinates into X and M1. So offset 190. Um, if you were to just read that as a float, it is the X coordinate. So I kind of base some stuff off the script on the fact that this instruction is going to be what runs when it returns to code, original code, before returning. All right. So basically the setup is you do the AOB scan, you allocate some memory, then I specify a place in memory where the base address for the structure is going to be. So that is just RCX instead of offset 190. We just want that base, right? <clears throat> so that's what that's going to be for. This is a flag that I'm going to set up where if it is enabled, then write the custom values that I want um, or that I specify from my memory addresses. Um, instead of the ones that are in the game's memory for XYZ. And I'll show you how I set that up. But then I just uh, initialize, or whenever you enable the script, we declare a byte of zero, which is false um, for the flag. That's the default state. Then here I am setting up basically four memory addresses for four byte uh, floats essentially for XYZ and then um, the additional fourth. I've just basically what this instruction does where we're moving these packed values uh, basically across eight or four addresses rather. Uh, the fourth one doesn't really do anything but anyway so we initialize with zero for all four of those addresses. All right, so then there's the labels here that get created for the script. And now here is where I do everything. Uh, normally this is where, you know, the new mem label is applied. Um, so I've just changed that. Uh, so the first thing to do, push the flags. Then what I want to do is uh, comparison to see if I've already loaded girl base or the base address. Um, if I've already done that, then I want to skip doing the initial check. Okay, so uh, if it's not loaded, then it's going to check for 5 in the lower portion of R14. And if it finds 5 there, then what it will do is uh, load RCX. All right, we create our own pointer to that base address. Uh, and then what I want to do is the current XYZ values. Okay, I want to take those and I want to populate my custom value memory addresses with what is in memory. Okay, so basically what this will do is whenever you enable it, and it writes those default values to custom values. The first time you go to write your custom values when you enable that flag, you basically write uh, what is 
currently in memory at the time that you enable the script instead of you trying to define like I don't know where should this object exist you know the first time so yeah this is just a nice little way to do that okay so that's going to load uh, the games XYZ values uh, into XMM1 and then we just take that and load it into our custom values okay so that's on the initial enable right and that's going to get skipped after that's enabled whenever it comes back into this it does the compare then it'll jump to here all right <clears throat> then what we're going to do is again see if that address um, has been acquired if the base address is there all right well if it's not there it's just going to jump here and continue doing what it would do otherwise then we want to check for the flag to see if our custom values flag is enabled if it's not enabled then we're just going to jump to here and continue on and do what it would do otherwise we are going to load our custom values okay into XMM1 and then we're going to load that into um, current memory like where the game stores the XYZ values so we're basically doing the opposite of what I did here <laughs> right and so what that's going to do is now when the game wants to run its move APS instruction here what exists here is what we've put there from our custom values right and so yeah that's pretty much it <laughs> um, you know it's a lot of setup initially but once you do this stuff a few times it's pretty intuitive all right so let's see what this looks like right so right now we don't have our custom values loaded the scripts not on all right I'm going to enable it boom all right this is the XYZ coordinates from the game all right and as you can see she's slightly moving and so that's being denoted here our initial values that were loaded into our custom XYZ right because it loads the first time and then it skips it's not picking up these additional writes you know uh, but it's such subtle movement it, it doesn't really matter so let's say we change this to like 200 we change this one to 200 okay nothing happened she didn't move right so the reason for that is we haven't enabled our flag so now if we make this a one there she moved right so she has moved and we see our values in current XYZ right and so now you can go in and create your hotkeys to like change these values with key presses right and you know you can toggle the flag on and off via another key press if you want um, and just sort of have all this stuff happening in the background via your key presses that's pretty much it so yeah if you want to do something like this now the reason I kind of came up with this solution in particular is because all the instructions that access these values there's one instruction that writes when I nop that instruction and it is it's not in here at the moment but anyway that one instruction when I nop it for some reason there are other instructions that read that stop reading and I've tried backtracing you know quite a bit uh, and look at the differences of where those writes stop writing uh, I'm sorry the reads see where those reads stop reading and try to re-enable them whenever I have nopped the one write because I wanted to be able to stop what the game is writing and then just put my own values here in these addresses and then have the game read that right which happens if that write instruction is still enabled but as soon as you get rid of it <laughs> it it won't read your values that you put into here so instead of doing that I just found one of the instructions that reads created my own addresses and did this whole thing so now I don't have to worry about 
futzing with backtracing and continuing to figure out, which I'm still going to work on because now it's a puzzle that I have to solve. <laughs> but uh, yeah, anyway, so that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, I like I said at the beginning of the video, I've been gone for quite a while, just life, um, and kind of got out of doing this stuff for a while. Um, so sort of reinvigorated with it, looking to, uh, you know, get the channel resurrected and start posting a lot of stuff again. Um, and, you know, we'll see what happens. So anyway, yep, good to be making another video. Hope you've all been doing well. If this is your first time to the channel, check out some other Cheat Engine tutorials. Some of them are, you know, a little dated now, but that doesn't matter all the stuff still applies in terms of, uh, you know, what you do to do this stuff, right? So anyway, all right. Thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and I'll see you all in the next video. Take care.